So you're in a museum, and you encounter a skeleton much like this one. You want to learn more about it, so you look to find a label that isn't there, so instead you turn to the specimen itself. Scanning along the beast's skeletal frame, the first thing you notice is its impressive skull, especially that toothy smile, which suggests that this thing, whatever it was, however many millions of years ago it may have lived, was a carnivore. Next to it is a smaller, more squat animal, toothless save for a pair of tusks, probably a herbivore. If these two species did indeed live in the same environment, it's safe to conclude that they would have interacted in some way, most likely as predator and prey. When trying to understand ecosystems that no longer exist, paleontologists often lack direct evidence of the interactions between animals that most certainly would have occurred. So they rely instead on interpreting vanished places through the lens of what we understand about modern organisms. But the record preserved by the Chin Li Formation is an exception to this. These scorching red badlands found stretching across the Colorado Plateau date back to a time called the Late Triassic, spanning from about 220 to 205 million years ago. The Chin Li does contain dinosaurs, but not the ones we're used to. This was an early stage in their evolution, when they were a small bunch, relegated to the sidelines by larger, more alien animals. The age of reptiles had begun long before the earliest dinosaurs. It was the ancient archosaurs, the ruling reptiles, that were the dominant force in the Chin Li. But among the many species found in the Chin Li, the ratio between predator and prey seems to be skewed in more than one way. Not only are the remains of carnivores found more commonly than their presumed prey, but they were also more diverse, represented by many distinct species. This is different from what we know to be true about most ecosystems, where herbivores vastly outnumber carnivores. In the face of this strange imbalance, paleontologists have wondered how such a carnivore-dominant system could not just simply exist, but thrive and persist for millions of years. A clue to this mystery comes from direct fossil evidence preserving interactions between animals. These insights didn't come in the form of any complete skulls or skeletons. Instead, they were gleaned from partial limb bones, described in a study by three paleontologists in 2014. These bones, each of them a femur, didn't come from the same individual. They were both found at separate Chin Li sites in New Mexico, separated from one another by about six million years of time. Though not very impressive on their own, each of these fossils tells a story of life and death from the western edges of Pangaea. Dated to 218 million years ago, this specimen is the oldest of the two. It represents the lower portion of a femur, with long fractures radiating from no less than four deep punctures. Something bit this animal, and it did so with enough force to collapse the inner walls of this bone. Judging from the shape of the bite marks, the team had a good idea of what sort of animal had delivered the blows, but the other specimen preserves the smoking gun. This more complete femur is riddled with bite marks, one of which is plugged by the crown of the predator's tooth, embedded in the bone for 212 million years. CT scans revealed the shape of this tooth, confirming the team's suspicions. A tooth like this one is most at home in the jaws of a phytosaur. Though an incredible find, this is no surprise, as this group of large archosaurs, similar looking to their distant crocodilian relatives, are some of the most common carnivores found in the Chin Li. The real surprise came when the identity of the animal that the femur itself belonged to was revealed. Though there isn't much to go on, the team deduced that each of these specimens are from Raosukians, similar to the animal shown at the start of this video, dominant predators of the Chin Li. Judging from the size of the more complete specimen, it was estimated at an impressive maximum of 9 meters long, on par with the biggest Raosukians found anywhere. Most of the marks on this bone, including the embedded tooth, are surrounded by what the team calls reaction tissue. The wound began to heal. This Raosukian was not simply scavenged by a phytosaur, it was alive when it was bitten. It survived the attack, and it lived long enough for extensive healing to have occurred. What's more, judging from the tooth's size, the phytosaur was estimated at 5 to 6 meters long. This phytosaur had attacked a dangerous predator, much bigger than itself. But that's not where this story ends. It seems that though this mighty battle-scarred predator had survived an encounter with a phytosaur, it wouldn't be too long before it met its end at the jaws of one of these hunters. 
Near the healing wounds are another set of gouges, this time with no evidence of healing. Whether the Raosukian was taken down by a Phytosaur, or simply scavenged by some after death, is uncertain. But judging from the placement of these marks, the team has reason to believe that one Phytosaur had early access to the remains, adding credence to the case that it had in fact killed the Raosukian. Lower down on the specimen are a set of score marks, the sort of trace left after stripping flesh from bone. It's apparent that no less than three Phytosaurs interacted with this bone, each leaving their trace in the fossil record for 212 million years. So why would a Phytosaur attack an animal as threatening as a Raosukian? Why were these carnivorous animals so readily targeting other carnivorous animals? In at least some cases, ones much larger than themselves. We can't say for sure, unless that's at least in part how the Chinle ecosystem functioned. Maybe the great diversity of predators was allowed to exist because they fed also on each other, thus making the distinctions at the top of the food chain more blurry, more complex than we had previously assumed. Don't let the gauntlet of teeth and spikes distract you. Strange as the Chinle environment seems, it was once a real place, the setting of a complex environment that lasted in some form or another for about 20 million years. Not even the foggy veil of deep time has the power to separate it from the same rules that govern modern ecosystems. Through these fossils, we've gained an ultra-rare glimpse into the misty world of these animals, a world where even for the mightiest of carnivores, venturing to the water's edge to alleviate the thirst spurred on by the balmy Triassic heat was a potentially deadly venture, one that demanded that they sacrifice their role as top predator as they lead themselves into the domain of another sort of killer, perhaps a patient one that, much like its distant crocodilian relatives, lay frozen beneath the murky pool it lives in, whose instinctive itch to strike is scratched by the tiniest inkling of movement above the water's surface. <laughs>